Hello and welcome back to WD18, the Watford fan at Channel. Welcome to your post-match prime, brought to you by the Mad Squirrel in the Mad Squirrel. My name is Jacob Coleshaw. I'm joined by Charlie Zazera and Sam Yuko to review and uh, react to a very disappointing defeat in the end. But I don't think that told the whole story about the way Watford played today. They finished Watford 1, Commentary City 2 at Vicarage Road. Um, Sam, just your initial thoughts and feelings. And we should actually just mention to start off, we've got Ryan Andrews' signed shirt in front of us today. A uh, huge shout out to Ryan and his dad, Wayne, for uh, sorting us out there. Uh, there'll be another signed shirt for the WD18 Cup, so make sure you check that out. Link is in the description below. Sam, initial feelings, reactions after a, uh, a disappointing defeat uh, at Vicarage Road today? I'm deflated, to be honest with you, Jacob. Um, particularly because I thought that first half and the first part of the game, I thought Watford did really, really well. I thought it was a huge improvement on what we'd seen the other night against Swansea and the last few games against Mill and Huddersfield. But it was just so disappointing sitting next to Charlie. And Charlie just kept on saying, we have to get that second goal. And... I thought as soon as commentary equalised, I thought the writing was on the wall. Just as soon as they scored, it was almost like uh, putting a pin in a balloon in Vicarage Road. I think everything just went after that. And then the writing was on the wall for the rest of the game. So really deflated. The performance was slightly better, but it's about getting points on the board. Is that what we deserved? Or do you think we deserve more, Charlie? You don't deserve three points for a good half an hour. Um... Like I said, I actually thought, I said to Sam, I thought first half an hour is probably the best I've seen as Vicarage Road since QPR. But then we just kind of lost a bit of control, a bit of momentum. They got a foothold in the game. Not that they were peppering or creating many really good chances, but we just lost that control. I haven't seen the goal back, but I think Wesley Hoot got nutmeg, Dan Batman rushed out, gave a penalty, and then after that, it just felt like. It was a big, we saw AJ win yesterday, but it felt like that was a big body blow and we didn't have the energy to muster up getting to the levels that we saw earlier on, which is such a shame because I was so pleased with the, with the start of the game. I think the most frustrating thing about that goal, uh, that penalty, and if you even take a step back and I say to the lads on the way here, commentary had a penalty and one shot on target and they've scored two goals. The only other save that I can remember Dan Batman making was on the stroke of the start of the second half where he uh, made a save with his left boot. Apart from that, we, Coventry didn't do a lot. I mean, the argument is that Watford didn't probably create a lot either. But Sam, you probably, looking back on it, have to capitalise on that good half an hour in the first half. What was good about the performance in the first half compared to maybe what we saw in midweek? I think something that's been spoken about a lot is the atmosphere at Vicarage Road. And I think in response to that, what I've said is that the players have to give the supporters something to feed off. And because I think it was clear that the players were trying to attack, trying to create things, I think the atmosphere was really lifted by that, which in turn lifted the players as well. Um, but I think it was just the way movement was there, the attacking intent was there. I'm not sure whether that was slightly because we were shooting towards the rookery at the start of the game as well, when we often get that lift at the start of the second half. But... It's just frustrating because, as you say, you've got to capitalise in that first half an hour. Something that Val's spoken about is this what the team aren't ruthless, ruthless enough. Commentary today, three shots on target, two goals from that. We haven't had anything like that this season. And as good as that first half an hour was, it ultimately counts for nothing. Let's talk, let's talk through the, the positives, the goal. Uh, Ryan Andrews with the with the throw, he tried it a few times actually, and then Porto with a great header. I mean, the amount of times if players make a run across the near post, you normally get something because crosses are over under hit or long throws uh, don't go as far as people think. And I mean, Porto, great header. I didn't really think he had that in his locker, but it's a, it's a lovely finish. I think um, hats off to our new set piece coach. I think we have looked a lot stronger both defensively and offensively with our set pieces. I know this one was a long throw, but we saw midweek. We scored one, the, was it the equaliser? The first one, equaliser. Um, Porto makes that near post run. He had a good chance at Swansea as well, didn't he? In the first half, a header which he just missed. So, a positive, but I was just more happy with the kind of shape of the team. We saw Tom Deli as a six, so I thought was was decent. Um, I thought Kayembe was excellent. Oh, you said he thought he was his man of the match. He was my man of the match, Sam thinks otherwise. Who, who's your man of the match, Sam? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just having to have a sip there. <laughs> no, for me, it was Shat Fatatsi. I know he only played the first half. Unfortunately, came off injured, but I thought that was the best attacking display I've seen from a Watford player in a while. I thought the intent 
from him every single time he gets it wanting to go forward I think was outstanding on the half turn on the halfway line he's just so dangerous and I think we've said this previously he reminds me a bit of Forestieri which is on the half turn he's so exciting to watch and if there's one good thing to say about Watford's transfer business this season, I mean, getting him tied down to a longer term deal, I think it's a really, really good move. And I hope his injury is not serious at all because we just look like a better team all round when he's playing. It did make a difference when he went off. I don't think there's any denying that. When Georgie came off playing on the left, we put Dennis out there. It felt the dynamic and maybe the balance of what the team changed a little bit. I would give it to Kayembe because I felt that he does the basics and the simple things well, which is what you lads said in the second half we lacked maybe a little bit in terms of the basics, Charlie. And what do you mean by that? Even, even in the first half, I think we lacked the basics. It's like a five yard pass or putting the ball in front of a player so that you can run onto it. And we just slow down our own attacks. And it's just that quality. And I don't know if it's a confidence thing. Uh, it must be a confidence thing because if you're flying, everything's right. But I think that just slows us down. Like I said in the last stream, like the chemistry is not great up front. And I think we saw a bit of that again. Um, but I, I just like the, sh the shape of the team in the first half. K Kone brings that energy and his enthusiasm does bring to life. I thought it was quite dynamic, all the front players. And I thought it, it troubled Coventry. Um, what do you think it improved? Was it actually just in terms of personnel? Because I looked at yeah. our starting lineup, there was probably only one position I'd change in terms of our best team, and that's probably Livermore coming in for Delhi Bashiru. Uh, goalkeeper. Oh, sorry, and Batman as well. Yeah, yeah, my bad. Sorry, just so, I completely forgot about that, to be fair. From the striker, I felt with Dennis like that, I think sometimes when we got Bio or Rio up front, we just see direct balls, which is such hard. But I think with those up front, we were trying to go for it through the wide, dropping deep, and it just felt a bit more fluid. So that, that's the shape I'd like to see more of this season. And I think we saw that when Bayo came in. Um, it was just like really, really tough. So look, it's, it's, it's another bad, bad result because we need to win so desperately, but- uh, A home win. When was the last time we at home? Well, I think we, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think we have one of the worst home records in the in the 92. Uh, not not good at all. I mean, let's go back. So we, we've gone we've gone one nil up. It felt like we need to kick on and capitalise. They then equalised Sam. But do you know what? I actually wanted to mention a phase of play that I felt caused a little bit of that, and that's where we dropped off. Daniel Batman played a pass to Tom Deli Bashiru, and I don't like picking out players, but I do have to with Dan. He played a pass to Deli Bashiru on with his back to goal and Coventry players around him. And Tom was immediately under pressure and it put the whole team under pressure. Then then led to the next phase of play when Jamal Lewis tries to play the ball to Kone. And it was just knock-on effect after knock-on effect after knock-on effect. And we just kept dropping deeper and deeper and deeper. And then the goal was, as Charlie mentioned, Sam, where, do you, where did you see it going wrong? Who's to blame? Because initially people are going to go Batman for giving away the penalty. And it was a great penalty in fairness when he finished it. But is that Wesley who needs to be a little bit smarter with his positioning or is it is it actually further on we need to look on? No, what a penalty, by the way. Um, <laughs> I think uh, I think Wes Hoot does have to do better today. He's got to be a bit stronger. I wonder if psychologically, mentioned on the way here, I thought today was a bit more of an emotional performance from Hoot uh, that we've seen previously. I wonder if those messages midweek got to his head a bit. I think it's the goalkeeper, though, to be honest with you. I think when he's in goal, I think the team questions themselves a lot more and a lot of things which are instinctive in football are second-guessed in a way. Um, we're going back to the, the penalty. The first phase of play came from a corner where Batman looked like he was about to come off his line to claim it, but went back onto his line and didn't claim it. And I think from that, while it's the, the ball did go out, we cleared it, and then the second phase of play came the penalty. I think mentally, the whole team at that point are thinking, well, what's going on behind us? Is he coming? Is he going or not? I mean, it happened in the last five minutes of the game as well. Tom Daly was thinking, is Batman coming off his line here so I can hand it back to him or not? I just think having Batman in goal, nothing against the bloke personally. I just think the team just just psychologically we're worse off when he's in goal. I think where everyone's on edge, the crowd's on edge when he's in goal as well. And I think we I think I think Val changing the goalkeepers to try and save his job, I think could have cost him his job as well. It's weird because of all the changes you'd made to this Watford team, I genuinely would have said the goalkeeper was one of the last ones. And it's not because Hamer's has been absolutely excellent recently, but if you look over the course of the season, you take a step back, you go, Hamer's has been one of the most consistent performers despite not being a number one for over a decade. He's been really good for us. Batman, unfortunately, Charlie, I think Sam's sniffed the nail on the head there. People panic when he gets on the ball. There is a sort of collective sigh and a panic that something's going to go wrong. I think what happened in midweek doesn't help that at all with the, uh, the sort of situation between Andrews and Batman. 
where do we go? Do you, I mean, if you're Val, do you just have to bring Hamer back in? Or do you think it'll be a case of he, he, he's almost a bit of pride and he goes, you know what, I've got to ride this decision out. I made it, I've got to stick by it. What would you do? I think he's only... Uh, 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 like, I think Val, this is one of Val's big areas in recent years, bringing, like making that change. I think we could have got a win against Swansea if Backman doesn't make that mistake. And today we could have got a point potentially if we had a bit more composure in that moment. Um, Dan Batman's a great bloke and he does some good things for Watford, but I just think at the moment he's in such a bad place. Confidence is shot. And I think Sam's right. It just affects the back four, the team, the stadium. And I think the thing that I'm just frustrated like, about is distribution. How many times have we just seen a long punt and given it straight back to them? And it's like the team just said again, the build-up's non-existent. It just felt like there was a lot more, better, more, lot more conviction with Ben Hamer and everyone trusted him more. Definitely. What I would say about Dan, um, the reason why I struggle so much with it is because I think in a way he tries too hard in some cases. He's a confidence player, isn't he? A hundred percent. And I feel like when he's low on confidence and he tries too hard and he makes rash decisions like the other night, he's obviously been criticised for staying on his line too much to the point where he's running off his line quickly or he's kicking the ball out of his hands way too quickly as well. So look, I'd bring Ben Hamer back in next week against Birmingham, to be honest. Second half. Was it commentary making it a bit stop start? I felt like we couldn't really get into our rhythm a little bit. Was it Georgie coming off? What do we put it down to? Because it felt like, not that we played badly, but we just maybe struggled to get a bit of momentum in the game. Yeah, complete opposite to Swansea, where we came out and we, it just feels like we can't put two halves together or a prolonged period. What do you think that is, do you reckon? Is that legs? Is that the luck of squad depth? I feel like I've seen it for quite a few years at Watford. I can't remember us being able to perform consistently. And I got, we got some questions over and like, oh, I'm happy to say like, I, everything that I think is to blame is the ownership and the malaise that's going on in the club. And like I said, I'm happy to say, I think now is the right time if there's a suitable candidate to come in because we just get, it's just the malaise of the club and it's getting worse and worse. And like Val has got loads of faults. He's made bad decisions. So have a load of the players, but nothing's going to change until until they move on and we get this fresh impetus in the club and I think that's seriously lacking. And one thing that really upset me, I know I'm not talking about what you asked me, the question. At the end of the game, we saw certain fans, didn't we, like, they're just so frustrated and they were digging out players and stuff and I'm like, that's, your attention needs to be focused towards that director's box if Gino's in, in my, in my opinion, because it's just been a bit of negligence for what they've done in the players. And Sam, me and Sam had a bit of a disagreement in terms of kind of Oh, Val could have done this, but it's like, oh, we, we've got why we've got Raya and um, Ryovic and Bayo up front. And it's like, do you know what I mean, Dennis looks like he's knackered. How do we change things? If he doesn't change things, we're knackered and we want change. But it's just the hand we get with. So I just think the ownership is really, really killing the culture within the fans, within the team. And I think that's just eking down from the stands into the performances. And I think that goal, after we went one nil down, one knock, one bit of adversity, and the play is just a bit drained of confidence. Well said. I mean, I think the thing that I would say, Sam, about today, and maybe just recently, I'm not sure how many more levels we could probably go up, if that makes sense. When I look at that first half performance today, I didn't feel like, I felt it was, it was a good performance, that half an hour, that 40 minutes. But I kind of thought that's us, that's where we are. I didn't feel like we're anything more than what we are showing at the minute. And maybe that's a little bit reactionary and a bit harsh, but I'm watching this Watford team and I think, I don't think we're a, we're a great team. I don't think we're a bad team. I think we're about where we deserve to be, really. Is that, do you think that's fair? Do you think this season so far is an accurate representation of the squad that we've been put together? Without doubt. I think 100% this is where this Watford team are. I think, in a way, I'm not sure if you two agree with this, but I think Val might be a victim of his own success in some ways because... I think the first half of the season, particularly that December period, was so good that everyone thought, yeah, we can kick on, get playoffs. But I think the reality is where Watford are on the table now is where we probably should be with the quality of the squad we've got, the quality of, of depth we've got and the way that the ownership have run the club. So as frustrating as it is, I think this is where this team needs to be. And how we judge this team, our expectations need to be judged. But, um, need to Adjusted. Be judged, yeah. Because I think the ownership, ultimately what they've created, is a culture that has meant this team can't kick on any higher than they are at this moment in time, I don't think. Because 
realistically in the summer we're going to see something similar and I think we'll probably finish somewhere similar next season as well so yeah it's, it's really really difficult and going on to I agree with Charlie I can't remember the last time that Watford were able to sort of string together a good run of form in that way because maybe since Javi exactly because even that you think two years ago we couldn't get a home win in the Premier League Cisco maybe in that promotion season uh, but apart from that I can't exactly. one point I would have made just looking at Coventry today I didn't think they were at their level but they had Hadji Wright who cost them 7-8 million Ryovic cost us 1 million Sims as well Sims cost them if they go up it'll be 7 million again so a bit of perspective in the difference in squad um, that they only beat us because he had a bit of quality on the edge of the box to get that second. And the players they brought off the bench, Calamo here. I mean, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. as well, wasn't it? Yeah, two wow, top players, two top players. Let's touch on that second goal. We we mentioned the the other two. Uh, who's to blame? Who's to? Blame? I felt it was the midfield just looking a bit leggy. Not really. Calamo here getting in the pockets, getting on the ball, and it just felt like we just lost our runners. And then to. Uh, to give, I mean, it's as Sam said at the top of the show, I think it's three shots on target and one including a penalty and one's outside the area. Yeah, I just think second half, we're a bit all over the shop, like trying to chase the game. Our shape was, and he's just got far too much space on the edge of the area there. And yeah, he's got, he's a decent player, so he's, he's found it, but he, he shouldn't be collecting the ball on the edge of the area and having a shot on goal. Um, I know Portis was the closest man, but I just think the whole half, we have been out of shape and... Yeah, it just, again, like I said, it just felt like after we conceded that goal, there's no chance we were coming back. So looking at the league table after today's result, Watford are 13th in the league, played 37 on 45 points. They're seven points above the relegation zone, but Huddersfield and Birmingham have a game in hand. And I guess the question is, Sam, looking ahead to that trip to Birmingham, that's a huge game. Now, when you look at the sort of picture of this season, I mean, I, who would have thought we'd be looking at that thinking, if we win, you know, you kind of just say, OK, it's the season's done. I keep saying that every week for the minute. But with Birmingham, it does feel like a quite a big game. It's one of the... If it goes, the derby. If it goes wrong... Yeah, they, they, I think they took a late defeat today against Millwall when I looked at the score. And 90th minute or something like that. So... Yeah, it's a massive, massive game, uh, particularly with Watford's running. We've got a really, really hard set of games to come after the international break. We've got a huge say in the playoff picture as well, playing Southampton, Ipswich and Leeds. But that Birmingham game is absolutely huge because if we lose that, I am seriously concerned and looking over my shoulder. A point or a win, I think probably be OK after that, but we have to get something. But I think serious questions now have to be asked of Val's future. Going into international break, Charlie. <laughs> I tell you what, that is an absolute hospital pass of a, of a link from Sam. Oh my god, that's like the equivalent of like roll. Where you get the drink? <laughs> <laughs> Charlie, on a serious note though, you look at Val's future. Going into international break, we know the Pozzos operate. I am not. I mean, honestly, football cliches of WD18. I've said that so many times six years doing this channel seven years doing this channel the amount of times I've said that is unbelievable we said a very similar thing last year with Edwards with Bilic with Chris Wilder well not Chris yeah well yeah Ranieri. Bruce Wilder Ranieri the list goes on genuinely how, how are you feeling about Val's situation before the end of the season with nine games to go yeah not, not great like <laughs> I think he's, he's been in a really bad moment and he's tried to change things, tried to affect things. He's had a couple of sparks here and there, but ultimately nothing's really paid off. I just, I'm looking at recent history and all previous seasons when we've made a change like this, bringing in Chris Wilder, bringing in Roy Hodgson. Like, I just can't see how, we, I just, for me, if we could just stick with him and hopefully that at least shows to the players that he, he's in charge, even if it's still at the end of the season, I just, that's my feeling, like, I, I just, unless, I don't know, what do you guys think, like, there's been rumours about Tom Cleverley. Tom, we won you at the charity tournament, so don't do it. Um, but, I don't know how I feel about, give it, give it to Clevs to end of the season. But for me, I like to see Val stick in at least to the end of the season. Clevs current under-18 manager, Sam, could you see a situation, what, I guess the bigger, better question would be, would it surprise you? if Val went in the international break and Clevs came in until the end of the season to bring the vibes. 
because I feel like we very much, it's more vibes and tactics of what for these days. Bring the vibes, what have we become? Um, I think Not from Val, but just, no, no, course, do you know what I mean? Like even yeah. with Cisco, it was just like, just get someone in who's yeah. a really good guy and get the players happy really. Yeah, look, I think the best way of saying it is, I think it would be an internal appointment. Right. Whether that's Tom Cleverley, I think the other options would be Charlie Daniels. I think we've also got the option of Dean Whitehead, Omar Reza. So I think, I could see it being potentially one of those four. Also, the fact that we're, we'd have to pay off another manager. Sorry, Sam. Sorry to knock you off. I was just saying, do you think we'd get a bounce if they appointed someone internally? Difficult question because we're seeing different responses to different managers. Like you said, we, we didn't see it under Wilder last season. We saw it to an extent with Bilic, I think. What do you define as a bounce? Is it purely results? Because I thought the first half, in terms... Let's say the new manager comes in and gets seven, eight games. I think it would just be a case of can he get two wins on the board or something like that. What's we got and what is it, 50 we need to get? 45 at the moment. We need 50. With our running. Yeah, it's tough. Uh, yeah, for me, I'd stick with Al, but... I, I, and again, I, there's a few people who are saying, oh, he's lost the dressing room. That first half performance and then Swansea reaction at half time. I don't think he's lost the dressing room. I think it'd be a bad move. I don't think this is what I'm saying about that first half. I generally don't think the level could have been much higher in terms of our actual passing, the way we were moving the ball the, with the players we have. And I, I mean that respectfully. It's not like a case of I'm expecting us to be prime Barcelona, but we moved the ball well. There was good energy. We showed quite a good endeavour. It's just that final third. And I, that's why I feel for Val because you look at our options through the middle. You haven't really got a proven goal scorer in the championship. And you look at Coventry today, I know they would argue they haven't as well, but you said about the quality they have in the final third of the pitch, and that was proved to be the difference. So, um, lads, just to wrap up on, on this one, any final thoughts? I always say this, any final thoughts? Anything I've missed, anything you want to mention? I'll, ju I'll just say, I said it on our closing, uh, the closing part of our preview the other day, but in terms of get behind the team, I think we saw today when you get behind the team, what you get, and I think the performance level was raised. That's not to say that I blame the fans. I think it was pretty deflating the way we conceded the goal and the points in the second half. But look, we've got eight eight games to go. We seriously could be dragged into a relegation battle. So let's get behind the team and hopefully stay in the division. Charlie? Yeah, I echo Sam's thoughts. Like, one win and I think it all changed. I think that Birmingham game is massive. Going into that international break after a win would feel a lot more relaxed. And if we don't, it would be a long two weeks. But there's a WD18 Cup in between, which is going to be a class day. 23rd of March at West Star Sports Club, the WD18 Cup, two weeks today. So make sure you do get yourself down to West Star on the 23rd of March. It's going to be a really good day. Uh, we've got one of the, the shirts that's going to be hopefully on the day. Uh, signed Ryan Andrews shirt. We've got loads of stuff on our, our auction from hospitality tickets to signed shirts. There's a lot going on and also a, a raffle as well to get involved with. Some really, really cool prizes on there. Some Watford memorabilia, some Watford gold. Um, lads, that should be a really good day. I think how, how much we look forward to it out of 10. I'm, I'm buzzing for it really. And yeah. seeing so many so many Watford fans down there and what hopefully should be a positive day in quite a difficult period at the minute. Yeah, after going down to the venue today, I'm properly excited now. Obviously we've got like a 4G pitch where all the football's going on. All the fans will go on the outside, so it should be a good atmosphere. We'll have all the auction prizes and raffle. What I would say, get involved in the raffle prizes. It's only five pound and you can win some unbelievable prizes. And obviously, but obviously all proceeds are going to two great charities. So I'm just looking forward to mainly the week of what now, mainly seeing you guys running a great day and meeting Watford fans. Obviously Watford are going to be not playing, so a week of them, but should be a great day. Like we know Clevs is coming down. Hopefully maybe some other uh, surprise guests. Watch the space. Um, but yeah, hopefully it's just going to be a great day. Um, just to mingle and that's what really supported the team's about meeting like-minded fans so and hopefully we're going to raise some good money for Jerry. Absolutely two great charities as Charlie mentioned the Peace Hospice and Half Gym Sam your uh, refereeing ability what we're we saying myself and Sam are, are, are refing some of the games. What refs would you compare yourselves to? I like to let the game flow so I'm going to go with uh, Mark Clattenberg. I might go with the over-elaborate Mike Dean and just start playing the... <laughs> <laughs> oh, brilliant. Do you know what? Sam's going to be in a... Like Me and Sam are going to be in a full referee kit, by the way. Um, but yeah, it should be a great day. WDAC Cup. And afterwards, where are we going to go? 
I mean, that's one of those, you, all I'm going to say is, if you come on the day, it'll be a great night. It won't just be a great day, a great night as well. Thanks so much to Sam, Charlie. Make sure to leave a like on the video. Uh, get down to the Mad Squirrel on a match day or in the week. Uh, this video was brought to you by the Mad Squirrel. Post-match pint, leave a like on the video, subscribe to WD18, follow the guys on their social channels and us at WD18 fans, and we will see you next time. Take care, and up the Hornets, not the WD18 Cup.